Good morning, traders. Joseph here from ACAB. Welcome to this week's Trade Zone Asian Session update for a new week. So, as we start with, if you do like our content and you would like to uh, see more of it as it comes out, please make sure you subscribe to our channel and to our newsletter, and you'll be able to stay up to date with the latest uh, analysis that we're putting out, which includes our guest speakers that we have during the week as well. And some of that, uh, majority of the analysis, sorry, all of the analysis is fantastic. And we do have new speakers uh, rotating regularly, so it's always fresh. And and we do have new perspectives coming out. So we'll start with uh, this morning so far. So as we can see at the moment, we are seeing risk currencies trading slightly higher to the USD, but they are still slightly lower, mainly to the Japanese yen with the uh, AUD JPY being the exception. Moves are not uh, that um, we aren't seeing you know any real big surprises this at this stage in the morning. Uh, futures have started as well, and they're slightly higher as well. So. We just cap off last Friday, so last Friday, we'll just refresh this for a moment, so last Friday we did see the ASX finish higher, but we did see some more selling in the US, uh, the Dow lost uh, 305 points, the S&P 29 points, and the NASDAQ 77 points, so everything was close to 1%, but not quite at 1%. Now, the small cap uh, 2000 did actually lose 1.19%. And the VIX increased by 2.42%, which isn't a massive uh, increase on the VIX by any measure. So, so far, as we've just mentioned this morning, um, things are a little bit flat. The Aussie's starting to make a small move, and we have a silver up in front of us at the moment. We wanted to talk about silver because on Friday we had a higher PPI number come out, so that does continue to make the inflation saga a little bit. Uh, interesting. So we have been seeing a bit of um, opinions talking about inflation tapering off, uh, maybe not as as bad as first thought. And we've had some mixed messages from the Federal Reserve, and we've had some interesting comments from our central bank governor here in Australia. But the PPI did come out. Uh, the core came in at 0.4%, so 0.2 above what was expected, and the ER PPI came in at 0.3, so 0.1% more than expected. <clears throat> Sorry. So we saw a pretty interesting day, a slightly interesting day on Friday. So silver was something I wanted to discuss today because if we look at all the precious metals starting with uh, platinum, we can see some good moves, some strong moves to finish last week. But um, gold as well, if they finished off highs, but silver did something a little bit different than the others. It actually hit new uh highs for the month so we can see it did touch 23.67 and before it did have a bit of a pullback but it did beat this high seen at 23.50 which was a really good sign and silver you know silver's trend continues to uh, do all the right things with that new higher low here and that new higher high there so that did uh, make another it did make a close above the high seen back in may and it's solid signs and we will continue to watch this trend it's actually leading in terms of um, shape and uh, momentum out of those three and if we just look at gold quickly we can see gold continues to move higher but it's, it's a lot the trend is a lot flatter and we can even see a possible ending diagonal starting to set up on gold so um, by all means I'm not saying the trend's going to reverse but it is starting to consolidate even though it is pushing higher and with that with those moves we want to see now a real a test and break of uh, this resistance here at 1803.91 and that's really the level that buyers need to close above to sort of signify that this trend is going to continue to go higher. Uh, Silver is not really having that issue at the moment um, but platinum as well even though I had that fantastic rally on Friday it was a, so a nice strong move. Um, we are still seeing price well below uh, this resistance up at 10.44. So there's a few things that we want to see. So from uh, the other two key um, you know, precious metal markets to sort of start showing that same momentum and drive that we're seeing on silver at the moment. So silver is also you know, a hedge as well. So in times of uh, worry, so traders will look to it as a investment to. Uh, hedge risk so it does look to be showing a lot more demand you know cleaner demand than the other two right now so with um, some of the risk currencies at the moment so 
Not too much going on. There's still resistance at uh, 68.14 for the Aussie to sort of beat, to, to continue this trend. Uh, the euro, uh, similar story. We saw a pullback after testing the short-term resistance. There's further resistance up at uh, 1.0584 to 85. And the pound, similar story again. It has a bit of key resistance here at 1.2288. So has a nice shape to the trend. Uh, it's had a nice uh, continuation pattern just here, but we do want to see a move that gets above and breaks uh, that resistance to show that this trend is going to continue. It's a pretty mature trend now. It's more of a medium term slash it's starting to become a long term trend, which is you know a far cry from that real sharp selling we saw you know not too long ago. And the um, dollar CAD. So oil came down on uh, Friday. It wasn't a big decline, but we did see some weakness. But the dollar CAD remains sort of hemmed in at uh, 36.57. And we've got this short-term support down at uh, 35.82. And the dollar index itself, um, <clears throat> interesting position for the dollar index. You know, we've had these declines. We had that plunge a week ago. Now we're seeing a bit of a consolidation here as if we've seen this before, though, with these patterns here. So even if we do see a leg up, we do have this higher low pattern. But we it does look a little bit more bullish than these two patterns here. But really would like to see buyers break above this area here at 105.51 to really show that buyers are trying to get back into control. Now um, it has been grinding lower, so we had these really nice moves lower here. These sharp retraction retracements in the bear trend, they're pretty normal to see. Normal retracements in bear trends can be a fair bit uh, more vertical than in uh, when you see a market going up. Um, so we can see more grinding. Um, the retracements are a little bit lower in length, but here some pretty classic ones and we are starting to see now a bit more of a grind so we had that nice low put in but sellers will need to get back down there and break that point to get this trend back on their terms and if buyers can continue to defend from 104 sorry 104.66 down to uh, 104.35 hold that area that could be starting to show some short-term support coming in on the USD and we'd like to see a move you know buyers get a move going that breaks this point at 105.49 to really signify that they're in back in control of the market. So we'll see how that pans out over this week. Now, um, the, some of the indexes, we will just touch on oil. So we did a big, I did a uh, 2023 review on oil. So one of my levels was this point here at 75.93. Uh, buyers had been defending that period, that point for a period of time. Uh, that was broken last week and we did see a decline down. We are seeing a bit of rejection down here. So we're wondering, if I uh, just I think that the powers that be would not really want to see oil back below seventy dollars. So watch this space, and we'll see what happens leading up to Christmas and into the new year. If we do see some more um, comments out of OPEC, if oil does start trading below seventy, um, and will we see signs or any steps from them to sort of try and get price back up above seventy? So. We'll be looking to see if this previous support level becomes resistance at 76. If it does, and we see a rally up and a new move down that breaks that low, definitely then we'll be looking for this trend to continue. And uh, it's you know showing pretty classic signs of trend continuation signs. So now onto some of the indexes. So as we said, US stocks uh, did finish lower on uh, Friday. So we are seeing some support here on the DAX from 14200 to 14215. Uh, a break below that sort of is a bit of a worry, but if we do see more defense and a push up, we've got resistance to deal with uh, up at 14.583. That and that goes all the way up to uh, you know 14.619. The US 30 again, we've, we're seeing a pattern of potential uh, you know uh, bear, further bear moves. We have a break of this trend. Uh, that's a small lower high, and we're starting to push lower again we're, uh, through both of the moving averages. Not that that means too much. The main thing I'm looking at is trend break here, and if we do see new lows break below uh, 33,400, this could line up with the dollar making a small recovery, and we could see a bit of a correction start to open up here, and you know we could even see a move back down to test some levels not seen for a few weeks down around that you know 32,556 area. Now um, the ASX has come on line this morning and um, we'll just have a look. It's currently trading 0.55% uh, lower. That's 40 points lower. We can see this move lower here. It's no real surprise with the weaker leads from the US. And um, <coughs> sorry about that. And um, we will just have to see what happens today if we do have a more, you know, if sellers do push the market lower. 
There is some support that would look to engage, you know, at 7,100, also 7,000 even as a big number. Um, but we'll see what happens today first if we get some moves down. Now, um, the JPN225 will probably be looking with a higher, with a, well, it's a mixed yen at the moment, was higher earlier this morning. But we did see, you know, a fair fade on our Friday session on this market. So we'll see if sellers can continue to push. And it looks like there's plenty of resistance moving up all the way to uh, you know 27 to 28, and we'll just see if my, if buyers can start saying. But otherwise, if we do see uh, negative, you know, the negative U.S. market influences come through, and we do see a push lower. Now, if the yen doesn't really pick up in too much strength today, that could also aid the market stability. Now, the Hong Kong 50 we'll touch on as well this morning, so it hasn't um, really kicked off yet. Um, so we do have a fair bit of resistance now being shown and uh, supply that goes up to 19,940 and we'll be just looking to see if buyers still have more momentum to kind of keep driving higher with some negative influences maybe we could see a small test lower. Now um, cryptocurrencies so far today um, we're seeing a bit of a mix we're seeing some light moves um, Solana's down 1% at this stage today uh, a couple other markets like Doge is down 1.4% but other markets aren't moving too much things are pretty flat as we can see on Bitcoin uh, not too much going on at this stage and uh, Ethereum similar story the weekend trade was pretty uh, not a lot of direction going on through the weekend session and it looks to be you know continuing to range out so BNB which has seen some some nice moves recently continues to range out as well so I think uh, crypto markets will look for a bit of uh, influence to get a bit of drive in one way or another and we will just look towards this week uh, some of the key factors that are coming out uh, this week news wise and we'll just get on to that now so we have GDP coming out of the UK uh, today at 6 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Um, some of the other key ones, so the Clement count change for the uh, Great Britain Pound is coming out on Tuesday and we have the Bank of England Governor speaking as well on Tuesday. Now, um, US dollar news, so this could be interesting on Wednesday, you know, very early Wednesday morning uh, local time here. Uh, we have US CPI data and we also have the year on year, the month on month and the core CPI. And we have a comment from the um, Governor Lowe on Wednesday. Uh, UK CPI, which could be a good one, they're looking for a lower than uh, lower CPI data than last. So last was 11.1, they're looking for 10.9. So if we do see a blowout to the upside there, that could be quite interesting. And we then have uh, the FOMC this Thursday. So obviously it's the, uh, the statement projections. Uh, the funds rate is expected to increase up to 4.50%. So, and we have the press conference. So NZ GDP as well to come Thursday and Australian employment data Thursday. And then we have the um, interest rate decision from the Swiss National Bank and we have the interest rate decision from um, the U from the UK Central Bank. So they're looking for rates to increase to 3.5% and the Swiss uh, rates to increase to 1%. And then to wrap up Friday, we have more interest rates decisions. So we have, sorry, very early Friday morning, we have the uh, ECB interest rate decision. So point 5% increase there as well and then we have US retail sales and we have the Empire State Manufacturing Index and that we that tops it off no it doesn't we have uh, French so all of the European services and um, manufacturing flush data coming out on uh, Friday and the US flush services PMI data finishes off on Friday as well so this week we have a real smorgasbord of uh, data coming up so it should be a very fun week depending on what comes out so we'll, obviously the highlights for, will be the uh, FOMC but definitely the um, the UK GDP CPI and interest rate decision could also be very interesting as well so definitely uh, keep on the on the ball with all that data coming out this week and um, there could be some good swings as well this week depending on what's coming out so there's a real mixed bag coming out this week so it could be quite interesting so i'll wrap it up there um, thank you very much for your time this morning really appreciate it i'm um, sorry this video has gone over 10 minutes again uh, but we did have a bit to go through we wish you the best for your trading this week uh, so please if you're trading any of these key news uh, releases manage your risk and make sure that you are on top of that aspect of um, 
um, your trading plan when tackling anything that could be uh, you know, highly volatile in the market. So until uh, Friday's update, have a fantastic week. Again, thank you very much for your time and bye for now.